videos are so scary they'll make you want to scream good luck proving me wrong number five jody dean aka hunting the dead has been a paranormal investigator since 2010 he explores practically any haunted location he can find regardless of the risk to his health and sanity march 30 of 2020 is when he revisits this haunted house in his hometown of Arepica, florida it only takes three minutes and five seconds for paranormal activity to begin God, it feels so good to be filming again. I really miss this. Pretty simple here. We just have a nice little paranormal potty. In the mirror, a shadow figure passes by. That's not his reflection. You can even see Jody's arm in front of it. It happens too fast for him to notice, so he continues deeper inside. Later, he senses something near and he turns around. Exactly why I do this. He sees it, a shadow passing across the doorway, a fast moving shadow at that, little footsteps if you ask me. Hello? What? He follows them and senses something watching him. The whole hallway looks blurry like someone standing in front of him. Hello? Dude, it sounds like there's rummaging, like a physical being being is in here rummaging and it's crazy because it sounds like it's just feet in front of me here and what are <gasps> and when he raises his voice it runs out of the door much like a scared child within a few minutes it's back inside of the house bound here forever i suppose and jody subconsciously walks back to the bathroom where the first shadow image is seen Were you trying to get my attention? You got it, I seen you. But before he gets a chance to help the girl, a dark physical force fills the room as the dark spirit box announces a single word. Something's touched me on my arm. I think something happened to this poor little girl at the hands of her father, and now she can't escape the room it happened in. And that's when dad confirms his presence. Was that you? Unlike Jody, who is filled with fear and passion, this man's voice is uncaring and cold. So when he's not checking out haunted houses like this one, this YouTuber likes to bring the spirit world to his own home however he can, primarily through a collection of possessed dolls. Ellie and Nessie are the two most eager to communicate. Look what happens when he lights a candle here. Nessie levitates and there's absolutely no strings to be seen against the black television backdrop. Ellie, meanwhile, has been known to smile on her own. Though the video is grainy, so editing is not out of the question. It's like she's smiling, smiling, going straight, smiling, going straight. Yeah. Smiling, going straight. yeah, she is. She's smiling, she's smiling, she's smiling. But it's when Ellie and Nessie are together that they seem the most powerful and able to communicate. They have no problem manipulating the electromagnetic reader to their will. Do you guys want to do some spirit box with me? Do you see the interaction there? They respond to their names without hesitation. Ellie. And the lights seem to appropriately gauge how strongly they feel about each question. Here's what they think about him moving to a new address. Are you sad that I am going to be moving from here? You are sad. Whoa. Believe it or not, Ellie and Nessie aren't even the scariest dolls in his forbidden collection. Just two days after Nessie says the word demon, Jody purposefully angers a different doll into doing this. I said, make your eyes blink. You blink your d eyes. Blink them. <gasps> I don't see any way to fake this. 
But maybe I'm missing something. Is there any way that they could make this doll's eyes close that you can tell? Even if they had a hole in the table and we're running the doll's head through it, I still don't see how this would work. Number 4. Hype Mike has gotten into some crazy adventures in the past, but staying at this abandoned factory until 3am is probably one of the wildest yet. Outside, he finds a collection of what could be someone's belongings out in the forest, but decides to continue anyway. As soon as he puts his camera down to climb inside, he hears this noise. which I think sounds like a door being slammed as hard as possible. When he finally comes across an entrance, he finds the door has been kicked hard many times, like somebody leaves this way every day. Though to be honest, the footprints look to be about his shoe size, so maybe it was him. On the floor are dried red stains and a massive red streak across the wall that I think is paint, or at least I hope so. And that's when he hears it again, the same sound as before. Reaching the door and this. Like, what the f Someone's kicking doors open. Do they know he's here? Soon he comes across more red stains, but I think it's almost definitely paint considering the red wall has a similar streak on it as well. He's exploring various old burned out rooms. When it comes back, the same noise as before. That. Guys, that was loud as fuck. Two bangs coming from opposite sides. He must be surrounded. The fact that Hype Mike is not taking off by now makes me think this almost has to be fake, and this explanation is really unlikely. What the fuck that was? Maybe it was like a bird or something. But just when I started to doubt this video, this really strange sound plays. This doesn't sound like the wind to me, especially how it ends, but tell me what you think it is and if it's paranormal. What the f Hype Mike makes it to nightfall without hearing any further noises. Maybe it's gone for now, whatever it is. He's trying to figure out a place to get some rest and wait out the rest of the challenge, but that's when the noises start again. Yo. Something just moved in there. Hello? Something actually. The room where it came from is completely empty, but the complex is still occupied by something that has been waiting for the right time to strike, and that time is now. Hype Mike runs out of there fast, but makes the mistake of taking one last look. Do you think this is one of his friends or a person who's lost their mind? Number 3. I'm going to take you to one of the most haunted places in the world. Some people call it the Arnold Estate, but you probably know it as the Conjuring House. Yeah, that one. This 1700s farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island is where the ill-fated Perron family lasted from January of 1971 until June of 1980. During this time, items would go missing and small piles of dirt would show up whenever they cleaned the kitchen floor. Soon, they were visited by spirits who smelled of rotting and could possess them at will. That's because it was less of a farmhouse and more of a portal to the underworld. A sorceress named Bathsheba Sherman is said to have practiced arcane magic here, possibly even sacrificing her own kin to better forge a connection with the underworld. People have lost their lives all over the property, kids floating in a creek and swinging in the attic too. Now it's a place for only the bravest of ghost hunters to go. Jennifer and Marcel of j and Explorations want to put their skills and equipment to the test. On Mar March 18th of 2020, they team up with some friends for safety in numbers and prepare to explore it, the real conjuring house. 
They want to see something crazy, so they waste a little time heading straight into the basement, the same place where father and husband Roger Perron used to feel a sinking presence behind him whenever he had to come down here to fix the heating equipment, which mysteriously filled many times. The deeper they go, the more they are filled with dread. I don't think it's just them down here, and this is why. Oh my god, it's just the creepiest. Something guides them to a piece of old wooden furniture in the far corner that just so happens to have a kid's drawing on it. Andrea thinks this could be a person with a crooked neck in her words, and I see what she means. If it's not that, then maybe it's someone floating in the creek. As she's exploring what it could be, a small face with large black eyes looks at her from behind. At least that's what some people claim to see. Roger always thought he felt something behind him. The old barn is next. This part is of particular interest. Yeah, this is neat, that old soda. I'm pretty sure Marcel is right by her, so it's not him. And here's another voice they catch in the bedroom. This one's not in the mood to sing. Make a noise, but you gotta make it close. Make it, make the noise in here with us. Can you knock on the wall? Its voice drips with hatred, and soon thereafter a foul smell washes over Jennifer, the same one who moments earlier was asking for a sign. Well, I think she's got one and don't think she's faking. That smell's coming back, and I can taste it. I don't, I don't like that at all. I want to get a drink. Go ahead. All right. I'm I'll stay up here. Yep. She smells the rotting, in my opinion, a stench coming from the door. Watch her reaction when she tries to leave. Oh my god. Just then, their friends enter to talk about their experience while using a Ouija board downstairs. They spelt out a demonic name, and just the mention of it registers on their equipment. The smell is when something evil, demonic, is around you. When we were downstairs playing the, the Ouija board with the videos above, and then they started smelling the smell up here. You see what I'm saying? The meter's going off. And while paranormal equipment is designed to withstand electromagnetic interference, normal cameras are not. Wait a minute, were those the ones that were on that table right over here? The screen turned off without him anywhere near it. A final truly bizarre moment happens when they head down to the dining room and see this hanging decoration is spinning. Soon another one is moving, this time side to side instead of in circles. Here's the same room taken towards the beginning of the video. The camera is not steady, but it's steady enough to tell that these objects are not spinning. It could be far from a vent or a draft, but I don't think so. These dried flowers are meant specifically to keep spirits away. Moving the flowers could be a message from the spirits that this isn't enough to stop them, as one of the ghost hunters points out. So you can say what you want about the movies, but the location it's based on is definitely not some place you'd want to spend the night at. J&M Explorations experience the same type of early situations that the parents had happened to them during their first few years of living here. Before things started ramping up, I guess the house likes to take its time. Oh, and then there's this doll who goes from waving hello at 13 minutes and 47 seconds to asking for a hug at 34 minutes and 39 seconds. So I guess Annabelle isn't the only one with possession problems. Number 2 there was once a YouTube channel called Meat Sleep that appeared to center around selecting and capturing people of random choosing. The work of someone documenting their own mental psychosis firsthand and putting it online for all to see. Some videos silently watch people from afar as they go about their daily routines, like this woman walking by herself in a lake. When she gets out of view, 
The cameraman stands up for a better look, completely fixated on her. Camouflaged by vegetation, he feels bold and creeps closer. She gives no indication of knowing or consenting to being filmed in this way. Never does she look back at the man staring at her, and I don't know what became of her. Other videos are simply outside of someone's window, presumably waiting for a glimpse of their latest obsession. One creepy video is taken in a subway. You can see the target briefly, a person with short dark hair, and there's slowed down audio too. The whole time I thought this was the work of one person, but at double the speed this sounds like a conversation between three people plotting to enter someone's home. The rest of this video takes place in a dirty basement room. Could this be where their victims are eventually taken? It's a downstairs dwelling that shows up time and time again in many videos, a place that gives off a strange and gruesome vibe, and this black body bag looks far from empty. Another video shows the basement room from the top of the steps while someone wails below. I feel like this could be a network of human collectors organizing a red room, which, for those of you who don't know, is a live stream of someone being brutalized by people paying money to decide what happens next. One video titled, She's a Keeper, is the outline of a person who perhaps has rotted into the floor. I think her screams are being played over it too. It's hard for me to listen because it's so realistic to me. But what do you think? Is this real or fake? A single chair sits in the middle of the room. Maybe the whole channel is an advertisement for an organization shrouded in secrecy. One video titled Commencement is total darkness and silence until this happens. Look at the writing on this door. The letters look carefully arranged in a grid-like pattern. Is this random graffiti or a secret puzzle spelling out the date and time of their next show? This organization appears to delight in taking apart families. No one appears to be safe. Not even children are safe. A home video shows a child with blonde hair on the porch. In a different video, she's spinning around as if being inspected by an adult who they don't trust. She looks taller, older, perhaps held captive for years, but I can still make out the same short blonde hair. And this adult woman, possibly the mother or grandmother, closely resembles the woman whose picture they openly mock in a different video. <laughs> So perhaps she is another one who has been captured as well. All of this evidence is starting to make me sick, so I'm going to cut to the chase, a final video that makes me suspect this could actually be a collection of vampiric humanoid creatures. First, their name is spelled out letter by letter, S-E-W-N-K-I-N, Sonkin. Then the camera turns around to partially reveal a ghoulish black-eyed face. Now that's enough to make me scream. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? Because I upload 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1 this creepy kids show is called Mushroom Land, and it was apparently broadcast somewhere in Poland decades ago. At first glance, it seems like a fairly innocent program until you pay attention to what they're actually saying and start to piece together what this material was probably really used for. We follow a girl named Agatha as she learns more about this magical world of Mushroom Land. The first episode is called Smile Guide, and I feel like there's subliminal messages the whole time, to the point where I had to take breaks while watching, like here at 3 minutes and 16 seconds, where it sounds like someone crying in reverse is being played over hypnotic piano notes. Ooh. 
The red figure is named Toy Fell, her smile guide, and the way they smile at each other at 3 minutes and 28 seconds is unsettling, if not demonic. Toy Fell is constantly by her side, getting her attention and distracting her while she tries to cut an apple. This is supposed to be some kind of instructional episode about how to slice an apple, but she seems to be teaching kids to do it all wrong and gets really close to slicing her fingers here instead. The next part made me feel slightly lightheaded. A creepy deep voice, no doubt laced with more subliminal messages, tells us that Mushroom Land is a beautiful meadow that will bestow misery upon all who enter. <laughs> To which Agatha seems to transform into something completely evil looking. Shoulders low as she tells us not to listen. Skip to episode 4 and she is opening mail from other kids who sent her their hair. Which is something people sometimes do after they take kids captive to prove they really have them. This is also where we meet someone known only as the Jeans Man, an adult who dances with the kids and appears to groom them when their nails and hair grow too long, presumably after being under his watch for a long period of time. How he gets them is never made clear, but some of the letters are from the families of other kids who could have possibly been taken. One of them mentions the 8th anniversary of their passing on. Another note says that someone's niece isn't breathing. By episode 5, Agatha is being prodded awake with a stick, furthering the theory that she's being held against her will. And she's wearing lipstick now, perhaps put on her by the jeans man. I think she's being allowed to call her mother here, but the stress of being in captivity leaves her unable to talk, and she disassociates from reality. Toy Fell appears again and tells her he's taking her on a field trip, presumably to the meadow. But first, she has to do something she really doesn't want to do if she ever wants to get there. <laughs> Something about these pictures looks a little too real, almost like there's still photos of a real girl screaming. The eyes might also double as a blindfold. Maybe the jeans man is a real person who forced her to make this show as a tribute to all of his previous acts. As for what Mushroom Land means, I think it's a clever way of saying underground. Creepy when you think about it. As for Toy Fell, he could have been a way to introduce the underworld to kids in a fun way that they wouldn't understand until it's too late. This was before the internet, so a kid's show would have been the perfect way to do something like this. At any rate, Toy Fell seems to be invading Agatha's mind and trying to be cute about it the entire time. Someone could watch this and not even know the underlying meaning. This is a show starring a small impish figure who seems bent on instructing harm. If this series is real, then it seems history is repeating itself. People have sadly been making dangerous instructional videos for many years now. These scary videos might be more than you can handle, so don't say you haven't been warned.